Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I want to talk to you guys about uh, setting up your Hay R15 with a short sight radius, right? So front sight over here, rear sight over here. Why on earth would you want to do something like this? Um, so there's a specific reason why I will sometimes set it up like this. Now, I'm a big believer uh, in setting your gun up for the way that you really expect to be using it, okay? So the way I, first of all, the way I expect to be using this gun uh, is with the red dot, okay? So that takes priority, and I like the big window red dots like this Holosun 510C, uh, very similar to the EOTech. Uh, in terms of it has a big window and you can move while shooting right because as you're moving around you know even if you're in an awkward position um you know you can still get you get on that red dot and see the target or if you're shooting like under a car or some weird something weird like that so i'm a big believer in the uh um you know in the big window red dots now one of the issues with the big window red dot is it takes up a lot of space you know, uh, on your rail over here, right? Because on the upper receiver, you pretty much only got rail from here to there, right? Because you really don't want to mount anything up here on the on the handguard. So this takes up a lot of real estate, uh, and I and they do make smaller optics. In fact, I've got smaller optics. In fact, you can even put like a pistol optic on here, and you can be like really small. Um, but I really like the big window red dot so that's that's priority for me right it has to be a big window red dot on any rifle that uh you know i, I intend to use you know seriously you know tend to do lots of shooting now the next most important thing for me is the magnifier okay uh, again this is something that i use i will use this uh, i've done plenty of videos where i'm shooting the magnifier uh, you know with the magnifier i'm shooting this ar out to 500 yards uh, and getting decent groups. So the magnifier is, is uh, you know, is, is a very useful tool that I will actually be using. Nice thing about the magnifier, you can flip it off to the side. So you got that, you know, really, you know, you can get on the red dot really quickly. If you need it, you can flip it back off. But best thing here is if you're not going to be using the magnifier, right? Let's say it's starting to get dark, like it's getting dark now, right? You're not going to use the magnifier take it off right you don't, you don't need to carry it on your gun you can put this in your pocket or in your backpack or wherever so that's one of the nice features of this right the magnifier comes off really easy now one of the things that you got to keep in mind as far as setting up your magnifier is uh, uh obviously it has to go behind your red dot but there's also issues of eye relief right so you gotta position this so that that you know you, when you get on the when you get on that magnifier, you're not going to see scope shadow. And this is a 3X magnifier. Uh, this, is a, this is the House Sun uh, 3X magnifier. I also have the Vortex, which is a 6X magnifier. That's even bigger. That's even a little bit longer. So, again, you get into issues of eye relief. So, I'm already out of, between these two things over here, I'm already out of real estate on my upper receiver as far as the Picatinny rail. Now, as far as up here, again, the next most important thing that I'm gonna actually be using is a light. And I really like the pistol lights. This one's a thousand looms. Same power pretty much as my rifle light. Uh, only difference is this throws the light a little bit wider. The rifle light has a slightly more narrow beam, which goes out just a little bit uh, longer. But for most of my uses, this works fine. And as you guys have, I've done plenty of videos where I'm shooting at night. Uh, I've tested this out. This works good. Uh, no issue with, you know, basically, you know, your dot is basically on top of your dots on top of the, of the light over here. So this, this appears to me like an A2 post, all right? So I have no problem seeing over this in that position. So with this setup over here, right, you know, this real estate taken, that real estate taken with things that I'm actually going to be using, okay? So that only leaves this area over here. So, um, this my red dots are all solar powered with a battery backup. So uh, it is, and I've been doing this now for several years. I've been working with these Hollow Suns for now for at least I think four or five years. Uh, I I I think I've only one time have I come to a dead battery, and the uh, um, the uh, uh, the solar power. I mean the optics still work with solar power. Uh, usually I see the blinky 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 right so uh, I have plenty of warning when it's time to change the battery so there's only one time on the on the rifle uh, uh, optics that I've come to a dead battery okay so my my line of thinking on the on the on, on the backup sites 
is that if it's not going to go here, right, because these other three things are priority. If it's not going to go here, it's not going on the gun at all, okay? I don't need it. I'm not going to put it on there. So if it's a choice between not putting, their, putting the backup sights on the gun at all uh, or putting it in this position, you know what, um, in the real shit the, shit, shit the fan type of situation um, where you may not be able to get resupplied, um, yeah, it makes sense that, you know what, let me just throw these on here so at least they're on the gun. Um, and then if at some later point, if the, you know, because this I can remove quickly, get this off, right? So, like, at night, I'm obviously not going to carry this on the gun. Uh, in the daytime, I'm not going to carry this on the gun, right? I don't need the extra weight. So that comes off easy. So the only thing that I'm going to keep that always stays on the gun is the optic. These things, these are the, the Magpul low-profile sights. These are, like, $100 each. So like total was, like, $200. They're really nice because they're really low-profile. They're small. So, again, for something that... I'm not going to be using. I like small and light. It's, you know, I particularly like small and light. Okay. So the question becomes, how accurate is this over here, right? How accurate is this uh, for a backup site? Okay, so I did a little, first of all, I've been testing this out uh, all week. Uh, I've probably done, I've, most of my testing I did with the 22 conversion bolt. Um, and I was, I was shooting, doing a lot of CQB work up close, shooting it at seven yards. 30 yards, 75 yards, at 100 yards, uh, and I have no problem hitting my my uh, targets. Uh, the uh, those are uh, two foot long by one foot wide. No problem hitting the targets out to 100 yards with these backup sights in this position, right? Um, out to 100 yards. I mean, if that, with the 22, if the wind picked up, that that threw me off a little bit. But other than that, uh, I was pretty good with that. Uh, now uh, today I threw in the 556 five, bolt. And I, I uh, took out some, uh, some ammo. And I, I use this Wolf Polyformance. And the reason why I used Wolf and not, you know, why didn't I use something better? Why didn't I use the 77 grain Sierra Match Kings that I have? Well, it's because I know that uh, with the iron sights, I'm limited. You know, my vision is somewhat limited. So it did not make sense for me to use more expensive ammo. I think the best I have ever shot with iron sights, regardless of, you know, even though when they're at the furthest points on the gun, the best I have ever shot is probably three inches, okay? So that's the best I've ever done with, with, with iron sights. Now on this rifle right here, I did a video a few weeks ago, uh, with the red dot and the magnifier, I got a 0.75 MOA at 100 yards, right? So this rifle is capable uh, of, of uh, a three-quarter MOA if I'm using the red dot with the magnifier and 77 grain Sierra Mastings, okay? So I know with the, with the iron sights, the best I, I'm most likely gonna do is three inches. Did not make sense to use more expensive ammo. So I, I just use this ammo because I know the best this does is, is I think like uh, two and a half inches, okay? Um, so uh, first of all, let's talk about some limitations that I'm working around. Uh, my eyes, okay? Uh, so the nice thing about the red dot is the red dot, you look at the target at the distance and the dot is on the target at the distance. So I'm able to use a current prescription, right? I use this prescription here, all right? Because this allows me to focus on the target at a distance. I can see the target crisp and clear. And then the dot is on the target. Okay, so this works great. Now, when I'm working with the iron sights, okay, the problem with the iron sights in order to shoot, you got to focus on... Um, you gotta focus on your front sight. Okay, so that's that's the issue. I gotta focus here. And the problem is with my with my normal prescription, okay, um, I can see the targets at a distance clearly, but the front sight appears a little blurry to me. I can't get a a, a crisp I image. And this is listen guys, I'm 15 years old. Uh, you know, I mean as you get older your eyes, you know, you start basically I should be wearing bifocals, but bifocals don't work really well. Or for shooting, normally if I'm reading, I just take this off and I can see fine like that. So what I do when I'm shooting iron sights and I'm trying to get the, the, the most precise hits that I can, is I take off these glasses and I go to an older prescription, right? This is an older prescription from like like 15 years ago. And what, with this prescription over here, uh, the targets out there, I can see the targets, but they're a little bit blurry. But uh, the, the front sight, appears pretty clear to me okay so that's one of the things that i had to do in order to in order for me to focus on this front sight and still be able to see the target because i could take my glasses off 
in which case I can see the front sight, but then I really can't see that target over there. So uh, a good reason for you guys to hold on to your old prescriptions that when you get older, when you get into your 50s like me, uh, the older prescriptions might turn out to be very useful for, you know, for this, this type of thing if you've been using iron sights. So I had to go to an older prescription and uh, I, uh, I did a shot with a bunch of times. The best group that I got uh, with that short sight radius is right here. So the best group I got was basically one, we're looking at the squares, right? Not, not these, because I was, initially I was off to the right and I had to adjust a little bit. So just the squares, one, two, three, four, five shot group. So the four shots over here are at four and a half inches. And then with that one down there, I'm out to six inches at a hundred yards, okay? So that was the best group I was able to hit uh, with, that, with, you know, with that short sight radius, six inches. And the best group I've ever gotten with the iron sights when they're at max distance is is i think three inches and that's like that didn't happen too often so most of the time uh i'd be hitting like closer to four inches so you know i've only i think i've only lost about two inches okay uh which i don't think is terrible okay uh i think it's a bunch of another group that i did um with this group over here yeah, this was a, a four shot group actually i managed to get three shots really nice over here i got a, a three and a half inch group but then i threw one all the way out there which opened it up to opened it up to uh almost seven inches with that one flyer out there is the difficulty with using the iron side especially the uh the ghost ring is when you're trying to first of all you gotta match this up like this so it's it, it can be a little bit difficult to find the perfect center okay so you can be a little bit off in that you know so that's going to throw you off so that's part of the difficulty that that i was having with this um um you know and the other thing is obviously with at this distance i didn't even bother to put a bullseye because at that distance at, at 100 yards where i was shooting this basically i'm using the whole paper as a bullseye and i'm putting my front sight post i'm trying to center it at the bottom of the paper and so the the front sight post which is black does blend in a little bit with the ground so again that gave me some issues some visual uh, issues of trying to center this perfectly and make sure I'm not too low, you know, just trying to touch the bottom of the paper. So again, this is a, a, a visual uh, problem that I was having with using the iron sights, which is not a surprise. I mean, I, obviously I've been shooting for quite a while at this point. So I was expecting that. Um, so th the issues of trying to center that front sight post in the circle and trying to uh, anchor it consistently to the bottom of the target uh, in reality, uh, is more of an issue than the fact that the sights over here are whatever. Okay. Oh, come on. Come on. The fact that they're seven inches apart, right? Uh, you know, I think that that the the, the 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 those other issues are much more of a bigger deal. I think than the fact that I got seven inches. As opposed to the let's say the normal uh, uh, you know 16 inches that I would have um, you know if I was shooting iron sights if I, I the best I've ever shot with iron sights on an AR-15 is uh, is is three inches okay so I'm doing six inches today okay great you know I'm I'm three inches uh, I'm doing three inches worse not a big deal on a man size target at 100 yards and I maintain the ability to put the things on this gun that I would actually be using, right? I can put the light on here. You know, that goes in really nice and fast over here. I can put the, the magnifier. So these are the things that I will actually, I, I really expect to be using, not the backup sights, okay? So the my other mindset is that, uh, in you know, another way to think about this is, if my life really depended on this, you know, um, you know what, I got these Halson 510Cs, they do have the, the quick attach. And if you take that on and you put it off, I mean, yeah, you might be like a little, like you might be a half M away or one M away off if you take it on and put it off. I mean, you don't lose, I mean, sometimes, right? Sometimes I put it on, it's like, it's almost exactly perfect. But sometimes when you take it on, put it off, it's, it's it, usually it's pretty close. So my line of thinking is, if my life is really going to depend on this, if you're going to send me out into the woods for a couple of weeks and I don't have, you know, you know, the, the, the possibility of the gun failing, first of all, I'd want to have a second gun. But if that's not an option because of weight concerns, you know, what? 
I'll take a second optic, right? Why not bring a second optic along, especially one that's quick attached like this? If this does go down for any reason, take this off, chuck it, take the next one out of your backpack, put it on. You're going to be within an inch at 100 yards. Just like this. If you're right, if you pre zeroed it and you throw it on the gun, uh, you're, you're going to be within an inch at 100 yards, okay? And that will get you out of a messy situation so you can maybe get back to base and then you got a better opportunity um, to... Uh, a better opportunity to, uh, to to zero it in but uh if i'm like i said my line of thinking is um the, the backup sites are the thing that i'm least likely to be using so if it's going to go on the gun at all it's going to go where it is the most out of my way and I'm, I'm not going to i'm not going to uh give up this piece of real estate here for the light and i'm not going to give up this piece of real estate over here uh for the for the magnifier okay? and uh, uh, people have suggested why not move this a little bit further up and this way you can put it in the back the, problem, the issues is first of all i like using the big window optics so if you push this up it ends up on the rail over here uh that's one issue the other thing is th there's eye relief issues with the magnifier it's got to be pretty close to your eye in order for it to work now one of the things that i do lose out with the with the with the flip up sight up here is i cannot use the small aperture right because if i flip up if i flip up the small aperture on these mag poles uh it, it, at that uh, like like this is meant to be up close to your eyes right you know basically the old saying was nose to charging handle even though i, I don't use that uh because of the optics that i use on this but the, the way that these ghost rings would work is you, you would basically bring your eye pretty close to the to the aperture so it would ghost out okay so that was how it was designed to work um that's not it's not going to ghost out over here and in fact i cannot use the small aperture because i can't look through the hole so i have to keep this at the big aperture even when i'm shooting at distance uh and i don't have the ability to ghost it out because it's so far up again it's a backup site this is for like an oh shit things went really bad um so th those my that's my line of thinking with the backup sites if, if it's gonna go on the gun at all okay uh it's it's gonna go there or it's not gonna go on the gun at all right i'm just gonna take these off maybe throw them in the backpack uh and you know uh, and maybe just you know bring along a second optic that will quickly go on there but i don't uh, like i said this is not the one and only way okay this is just the line of thinking i have adopted as a person that shoots Every day, uh, and I used to have this mindset of, oh, you got to put everything on a gun for every possible situation. Uh, you know, that was like eight years ago. My mindset has shifted towards, no, stay as light as possible, put on the gun just what you need. Uh, and then if you need to put other stuff, then later on you'll worry about putting those other stuff on the gun. So, uh, so it was that I got six inches with the seven inch sight radius. I don't think that's terrible for a oh shit my optics stopped working at least you'll you'll get out of there you know it'll give you because you're not going to be doing offensive operations if your optic fails you're not going to be on point right you're going to go if anything you're going to go to the rear um so for for for, for the for, the, for the, the way that things are most likely to work out i think that's going to work fine as a backup so, uh, let me know what you guys think uh post your ideas below if you're not a member of the channel subscribe i'll see you all soon